Testing a New Nation, the Origins of the Whiskey Rebellion. The year is 1791. A fledgling nation grapples with newfound independence. George Washington leads as the first president. Yet peace and unity prove elusive. Burdened by war debts, the government seeks financial footing. In the western frontier, economic hardship and resentment brew. Discontent finds a focal point, whiskey. The whiskey tax strikes a nerve among farmers and distillers. The stage is set for a confrontation, testing the young nation's resolve. The excise tax ignited the flames of dissent. Whiskey was more than just a drink. It was a currency in a cash-scarce economy. Farmers distilled surplus grain into whiskey for trade. The excise tax unfairly targeted their primary income. The tax was seen as a betrayal by the government. Tax collectors faced hostility and resistance. Resentment simmered, ready to boil over. From discontent to revolt, the farmer's fury ignites. What began as grumbling and isolated protests soon escalated into organized resistance. Farmers, angered by the tax and emboldened by our shared grievances, formed groups to intimidate tax collectors and disrupt the collection process. We tarred and feathered tax officials, destroyed property, and raised liberty poles, echoing the symbols of the revolution we had so recently fought. The Western frontier, once a symbol of opportunity and self-reliance, descended into a state of unrest and defiance. The federal government, eager to assert its authority and quell the rebellion, faced a dilemma. How could it enforce its laws without alienating a significant portion of its citizenry? The answer, it seemed, lay in a show of force. As the situation deteriorated, reports of violence and insurrection reached the capital. The government received accounts of armed men gathering, their numbers swelling, whispers of secession and the establishment of an independent Western nation circulated. The situation demanded a decisive response, one that would determine the fate of the young republic. George Washington, a president who abhorred tyranny but understood the importance of preserving the Union, faced a defining moment in his presidency. The Hamiltonian vision, order, and taxation. Central to the Whiskey Rebellion was the clash between Hamilton's Federalist vision and frontier anti-Federalist sentiments. Hamilton saw the excise tax as essential for national credit and funding industries. He believed a stable nation required revenue and law enforcement. Farmers viewed Hamilton's policies as favoring the wealthy elite. They saw themselves as victims of an oppressive government. The Whiskey Rebellion posed a profound dilemma for George Washington, challenging his leadership and the foundational principles of the nation. On the one hand, I understood the grievances of the Western farmers. I myself am a landowner who understands the challenges of frontier life. I sympathized with their sense of injustice and their resentment towards a distant government that seemed indifferent to their plight. I had, after all, led a revolution against an oppressive monarchy. The thought of using military force against my own people, people who had fought alongside me for liberty, filled me with unease. Yet, Washington was also acutely aware of the dangers posed by the rebellion. He had witnessed firsthand the fragility of the newly formed nation its unity tested by internal divisions and external threats. He recognized that allowing the rebellion to fester, to spread unchecked, would undermine the authority of the federal government and set a dangerous precedent for future challenges to its legitimacy. He feared that the Union, so painstakingly forged, would crumble under the weight of disunity and defiance. The fate of the nation, he believed, hung in the balance. In August of 1794, Facing a deteriorating situation in the West, President Washington issued a proclamation. He declared his intention to uphold the law and called upon the rebellious citizens to lay down their arms and return to their homes. He appealed to their sense of patriotism, reminding them of the sacrifices made to secure their independence. He offered amnesty to those who would renounce their opposition to the excise tax. The proclamation was a masterpiece of statesmanship a blend of firmness and conciliation. It demonstrated Washington's determination to enforce the law while leaving the door open for a peaceful resolution. However, the proclamation also served as a warning, a clear signal that the government would not tolerate open defiance of its authority. Washington ordered the governors of Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Maryland, and Virginia to raise a militia force of nearly 13,000 men. This formidable force, he declared, would march west to quell the rebellion and restore order. The decision to deploy troops was not taken lightly. It was a last resort, 
a measure Washington hoped would demonstrate the futility of armed resistance and persuade the rebels to stand down. In a move that underscored the gravity of the situation, George Washington, for the first and only time as president, donned his military uniform and took command of the militia forces assembled to quell the Whiskey Rebellion. My decision to personally lead the troops was a calculated one, a powerful symbol of the government's resolve and my own commitment to preserving the Union. My presence, it was believed, would inspire the militiamen and deter further resistance. The sight of their former commander-in-chief, the hero of their independence, leading the charge against them, sent shockwaves through the ranks of the rebels. It was a stark reminder that they were not fighting a distant king, but their own government, led by a man who had risked his life for their freedom. Washington's willingness to lead the troops into the field, to personally confront those who challenged the authority of the government he led, spoke volumes about his character and his unwavering belief in the rule of law. In the fall of 1794, the militia army led by President Washington and General Light Horse Harry Lee embarked on a grueling march westward. The journey tested the mettle of the men, but their spirits remained high, bolstered by the knowledge that they were marching to preserve the Union they had fought so hard to create. As the army advanced, its presence had a sobering effect on the insurgents. The sight of such a formidable force, led by their revered president, eroded the resolve of many rebels. Realizing the futility of armed resistance, many rebels chose to lay down their arms and return to their homes. Others fled westward, seeking refuge beyond the reach of the federal government. By the time the army reached western Pennsylvania, the heart of the rebellion, the insurrection, had largely dissipated. The rebellion, which had threatened to tear the young nation apart, crumbled in the face of overwhelming force and the unwavering resolve of George Washington. The Whiskey Rebellion, despite the simmering tensions and defiance that had fueled it, ended with a whimper rather than a bang. The arrival of the militia army, coupled with the realization that they were confronting their own government, led by a man they revered, sapped the will of the rebels. There were a few skirmishes, a handful of shots fired, but no pitched battles, no bloodbath. The rebellion, which had threatened to plunge the nation into chaos, fizzled out like a damp squib. A few rebel leaders were arrested and tried for treason, but Washington, ever the pragmatist, pardoned those who were convicted. He understood that punishing the rebels too harshly would only serve to alienate them further and sow the seeds of future unrest. He sought reconciliation, not retribution. The Whiskey Rebellion, despite its tumultuous course, ended with a whimper rather than a bang, a testament to Washington's leadership and his ability to navigate the treacherous waters of governance in a fledgling nation. The Whiskey Rebellion, though brief and relatively bloodless, left an indelible mark on the early American Republic. British commentator, it served as a crucial test of the newly formed government's authority, its ability to enforce its laws and quell internal dissent. French diplomat, the rebellion demonstrated that the federal government under the Constitution had the power to tax and that it would not hesitate to use force to uphold its authority. Canadian observer, the fledgling nation tested by fire emerged stronger, its union fortified. However, the Whiskey Rebellion underscored the fragile balance between federal authority and individual freedom, a theme that would continue to echo throughout American history. The legacy of the Whiskey Rebellion is complex and multifaceted. It serves as a reminder of the importance of a strong central government capable of maintaining order and enforcing the rule of law, but also of the need for that government to be responsive to the concerns of its citizens and respectful of their liberties. The Whiskey Rebellion stands as a testament to George Washington's leadership and his unwavering commitment to the principles of the Constitution. His decision to personally lead the militia West demonstrated his courage, his resolve, and his deep-seated belief in the rule of law. His measured response, combining firmness with a willingness to pardon those who had challenged his authority, revealed his pragmatism and his desire to heal the divisions that threatened to unravel the young nation. The lessons of the Whiskey Rebellion continue to resonate today. It reminds us that the delicate balance between liberty and order, between the rights of the individual and the needs of the state, is an ongoing negotiation, a tightrope walk that requires vigilance, wisdom, and a willingness to find common ground. The Whiskey Rebellion, a crucible in the early years of the American Republic, serves as a timeless reminder of the fragility of democracy 
and the enduring importance of leadership, unity, and the rule of law. Please like and subscribe to the channel.